uh, to get certain alloy materials to work with, like uh, some of my colored inlays, I had to mix into my own proportions. So the carrot is not so important, but the malleability yeah. of the metal, because it work hardens pretty easy, and you know that. And uh, so there's no regulations on that type of thing here. But as far as making jewelry from it or, or selling it as jewelry, then it has to have a proper carrot. Yeah, proper carrot. You yeah. know, if you're not uh, cheating people, it's... I know that probably there are a lot of people that frowned on my using the metals that I use to get the colors in, in the engraving uh, because they're not precious metals. And, and uh, I've been kind of criticized for that. But I didn't do it for, for the value of the metals. I did it for the impact of the colors, and uh, and as you've seen, uh, maybe you've seen, uh, they almost look like paintings rather than than a metal. Yeah. So I, that's why I did it because I could see I just got this idea uh, that you could get colors into inlaid into steel to where you could do painting like pictures, and that's been experimented with over the years by a lot of engravers. I think one of the last generation masters messed around with enamels and all kinds of things, just different colors in engraving. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I don't think it was real successful. But anyway, that's just incredible. I it's never, I never used uh, uh, this different colors of gold. Uh -huh. I'm thinking about using that, but I never used. Well, that I don't think I'd seen before. anybody do that until I started. Now I'd seen uh, the English use. Uh, different colors in sculpted gold uh, and Frank Hendricks had done some he had done some uh, inlays in steel with steel inlays with steel with the copper back to inlay mm -hmm. to inlay it into steel and then he'd done some uh, multicolored gold green and yellow and uh, pink gold together to make little flowers and things with different colors, which I, I'd seen that before, but it, it occurred to me that I'd never seen anybody do it on a flat plane. So that's what gave me the idea. And after I started, I haven't had very many people try it since then. I've, there's a few that are doing well with it, but uh, you don't see many people doing it. And uh, it takes different, little different techniques than just inlaying 24 karat gold. Uh, because it works hard and really easy, and you have to get your undercutting where it'll hold. Yeah. And did you inlay a gold uh, using wire or both? both? I, I've done yeah. both. Uh, I prefer to use the wire because it depends on what. Now, if you're doing ge geometric designs, mm -hmm. it would be better to use a sheet. Yeah. When you're doing odd shaped uh, cavities, then it's pretty hard to saw out something accurate enough to get those. Not that you you could do it. Are you are you sawing the shape? You saw it out. Yeah. I never saw. Yeah. I cut with the scissors. Really. Yes. And with the exact. Well, like I say, if you're doing geometric shapes, those are easy to do. With yeah, the but the uh, scissors or whatever. But you but do the I'm contour sure of an animal's face or something. It's got all kinds of appendages and things sticking out. You gotta have to follow those contours uh, unless you, unless you do it with wire and you can do it with wire but uh, like I say but it takes a different run way, on a liber liberty knife you can uh, see that uh, it's not just geometric lines right. see that yeah that's true that's yeah true. and around the flame well these aren't see. drastic enough variations that you can't push the gold into the yeah I I, the corners, I cut you know. pieces I did pieces like one piece here oh one full piece yeah here. then they meld together and you punch them in now it's a good thing about twenty four karat you can move it around quite easily yeah that's a fantastic piece thank you Ron. little piece of pearl inlaid that's cool. That's what I said when I saw it. Huh? That's what I said when yeah. I saw it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't noticed it in the photographs. The pearl? Yeah. Really? 
And what are these little stones in here? Is that this is rubies? Rubies? Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were that garnet. Yeah, here. rubies. Uh, and uh, pink uh, color gold uh, in, uh, in the flame. Uh, rose, yeah. rose, rose, gold. Rose, gold. Yeah. rose gold. Yeah. Yes, I just use this uh, like a different color. Yeah. Well, when you start thinking, when you start thinking along those lines of using colored metals to create scenes, you start getting all kinds of different ideas of what you can do with it. I mean, you know, like once you start thinking along those lines, you get to seeing, like you'll see in a picture or something, what would look good in a gold and then have a red cap or, a, you know, however you want to set it up to, to make it look good. But it's, it's pretty uh, inspirational. And the detail in this is just outstanding. Thank you even you. got, looks like you've even got a pupil in the eyeball. And what are these little diamonds? Yeah. Yeah. Diamonds there in the torch. Wow. In the crown. And diamonds in the windows. Right. Well, do people even see that? Do they even see the stones in there? When you when you look at this, like I look at this, I can't even see those with my naked eye. Yeah. My glasses, I can't They're see. very small. Yes, they are. Yeah. Point seven I think the yeah. size of the point seven. Here are the bigger stones. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. I particularly for some reason I particularly like this these two shades right here together yeah. on the same surface. Mm -hmm. Not one, not one raised above the other. Yeah, it's a building like this side, right. building and that, that side. That appeals to me for I don't know why, <laughs> <laughs> but now, see, I use this technique right here, mm -hmm. very similar technique to uh, to putting two sides to a flower in mm -hmm. a scroll or a, or a leaf of a scroll. I'll have it, yeah. uh, and you can see that in some of the books, where you do one side of the flower and then you have. Uh, inside of the flower coming out from the outside of the flower. Mm -hmm. Do do one color for the inside and one color for the outside. That's why that appealed to me because I've used that same technique and it's very attractive to use it not only with uh, just doing it flat but, but yeah. put shade lines in it to give it dimension, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. Ron. Pretty impressed. The boy's got talent. I think he does. He, he might end up being an engraver one of these days. <laughs> huh? That's cool. beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. It is. No doubt. Thank you very much. Um, you, blow, you blew me away. Amiak asked me to write something about this knife collaboration that he did with Tom Overunder. For the Art Knife Invitational book, and it was published there, and then also in the Blade magazine, it was expanded on a little bit. So I'll read what I wrote. Every knife tells a story, but some stories are more fabulous and incredible than others. This issue's cover knife, Lady Liberty, by Tom Overinder, crosses two continents, two political spectrums, three artists, and many decades. Born in 1949 in the capital of Armenia, Amiak Stepanian lived in Russia from 1951 to 2000, at which time he and his wife Svetlana immigrated to the U.S. As a young Russian master sculptor and tool and die maker, he was fascinated by the architectural design of American skyscrapers, in particular the Chrysler Building in Manhattan but he never imagined that he would visit it someday as an American citizen. Even more iconic for someone raised in the Soviet Union was another New York City landmark, Lady Liberty on Ellis Island. In Russia, simply seeing pictures of the statue with the seven radiating points of her crown and flowing robes was a secretly held aspiration 
of Armiox, that someday he might be free as well in that faraway land. Decades later, he would visit New York as a full-fledged American citizen, and the icons would be more than inspiration for him as the subjects for his engraving on Overinder's spectacular folder that presents also the precious stone settings by Bill Cronin.